Many of us today are out of gas, literally, figuratively, and spiritually, because you neglected to pay attention to your spiritual meter. You neglect to pay attention to your spiritual condition. You accept the circumstances and the situation of your life right now as it is what it is, when it may just be the result of the neglecting of your spiritual condition. You accept bad relationships and bad situations because it just must be what it is. No, it might just be the condition or the result of your neglected spiritual condition. Are you hearing me? To the Sardesians, that's what happened. They neglected their spirit. They thought there was all that. And they got defeated. And God warned them, wake up. You look alive, but you're dead. Look to the person next to you. Try to figure out which one they are. Go ahead. Look at them. Some of y'all nervous are like, don't look at me. If you go like this, we already know. Just saying. Here's the thing, guys. Your spiritual condition determines so much for us. It determines the following. And this is going to be for another day, the first two. The first thing that it determines for you, it determines the level of power with which you function in the kingdom. I'm not going to go into that one today. I know you want me to, but I'm not. Your spiritual condition determines the level of power with which you function in the kingdom of God and in this world. The more righteous you are, the more power you have. It's as simple as that. Point number two, or, or the second thing that your spiritual condition determines, it determines your ability to live out your God-given purpose. If your spiritual condition is not right, you can't live the purpose that God has for you. Because of the first point, because you got no power to live it out. You got no self-control if your spiritual condition is not right. Are you hearing me? We cannot be careless with our spiritual condition. It matters, and it matters because the third reason why it matters, it is your spiritual condition reflects the very well-being of your essence. Allow me to explain. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says the following. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture gives us a key as to who we are and what we're supposed to do. He says, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be what? Kept blameless. Our spiritual condition matters. And the funny thing about this, it tells us how we're created, how we're made. It tells us that we are spirit, soul, and body. Many of us know this already. We are spirit, soul, and body. There are three parts that make up who we are. All three of those have to remain blameless. But if you look at the order, God is intentional. He puts the spirit part first. Because if your spiritual condition is not right, your soul, your emotions, what you're feeling up here in your intellect will not be right. And if that's not right because your spirit's not right, then your actions, what you do through your body, will not be right. Are you hearing me? We have to pay attention to our spiritual condition. We cannot neglect it. Dr. Miles Monroe said it this way. He says, we are, in order to understand who we are, we are spiritual beings in earthly bodies. That's who we are. The spiritual part of us is probably the most important part of who we are. Your spiritual condition and why you cannot neglect it is so important because it impacts all that you are. I get that you might have emotional ups and downs and you don't want to try and spend time with God. But if you spend time with God, you'll have less emotional ups and downs. Your spiritual condition matters. It represents a third of who you are. If I was on a trip to Orlando, I got six members in my immediate family. If I was on a trip to Orlando and halfway there realized I lost a third of my family or I forgot a third of my family at home, you better believe I'm going to have problems. Which two kids did I leave? Or if I look to the side and my wife's not with me, Lord of mercy on my soul. 
Are you hearing me? Like if I neglect the third of what represents me, this is a problem. Your spiritual condition is important because it impacts all that you are. To neglect your spiritual condition is to neglect your very essence. But here's the good news, right? Because I want to give you good news. We want to leave you with some faith, some hope, and some love today. Here's the good news. There is evidence of a neglected spiritual life. Just like you can look at the gas meter and find out when you're running out of gas, you can look at your life and figure out where your spiritual condition is, where your meter is. Are you guys ready to look at your spiritual condition? Are you ready? I want to know. I want to know who's willing to be honest with themselves. Are you ready to look at your spiritual condition? Some of us are like, I don't know. I'll tell you after you tell me how to figure it out. That's part of the problem. We want to keep neglecting our spiritual condition. We don't want to take a hard look at where we are because it makes us to have to confront some real truths and deal with some real stuff. There's evidence of a neglected spiritual life. Have you ever left food out on the counter? Or you ever forgotten to take the garbage out? What happens? You can have the best meal ever on that counter. Five course meal, Michelin star rated meal, just something just so incredible. You leave it out there, right? And, and, and it just looks good that day. But what happens? There's evidence of neglect, right? If you leave it out there, if you don't throw it away, if you don't clean it up, what happens after a day? It might start looking kind of funky some kind of way, right? Might get a little discolored or something, right? And then a couple more days later, it's going to have a little bit of smell. You keep leaving it out there, what's going to happen? Cockroach is going to start being, I was going to say flies, but this is Florida. So you might get some flies, but you're definitely going to get some cockroaches, right? It's going to be all around that sucker. You keep it going, the, the, the flies, and the, the, sorry guys, but the maggots start coming out. Like there, there's evidence of when stuff is decaying. Are you hearing me? There's evidence in our lives when things are decaying, when we've neglected our spiritual condition. There's two groupings. I'm going to tell you what they are. The first, the first evidence of, of, of a spiritual condition, a problem in our spiritual condition are, we're going to call it the deeds of the flesh. The second one is the reactions of your mind. Okay? Actually, I'm, I'm going to jump to the reactions of the mind first. When your spiritual condition has been neglected, and this is not all inclusive, but it's going to get you thinking. How do you know that your spiritual condition is not well, that your tank is running out? Please get this. You begin to have fear in your life and in different circumstances. Because God says he does not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and self-control. So if you are afraid in different circumstances of your life, look to your spiritual condition. You might be running out of gas. You have anxiety. If you are experiencing anxiety, this is not a judgment. This is a, this is a rope that you can grab onto to get yourself out of the pit. Because the word of God says be anxious for nothing. It goes back to your spiritual condition. If you have doubt, the Word of God says do not be double-minded. Don't have doubt. If you are doubting, go back to your spiritual condition. Fill up the tank. Are you hearing me? These are all reactions of the mind, of our soul. You, you begin to be isolated. You enter into a place of denial or self-justification. You think you're doing it right when everybody knows you're doing it wrong. These are reactions of the mind, reactions of our soul when our spiritual condition has been neglected. Are you hearing me?